Soper sets out to find the cook. The employment agency that placed her with the Warrens does not know where she is, but directs him to some of her previous employers. What he discovers astounds him. In 10 years, she is known to have worked for eight families, and in six of these, typhoid had occurred. How is this possible? Has Mary been spreading typhoid bacteria for years without ever appearing to be sick? Soper remembers reading a paper written four years earlier by German scientist Robert Koch. Koch had found a baker who was not ill, but who spread typhoid germs, a so-called healthy carrier of disease. Could this be the case with Mary Mallon? Soper had read that literature and thought he was on the cutting edge of, you know, of medical science and history. If Soper is right, the cook would be the first American identified as a healthy carrier of typhoid fever. It would be a major discovery and make his career. I think Soper is very excited by this possibility. He sees it as a scientific puzzle that he is the detective for, and he's going to sleuth out and win the prize. To prove his case, Soper needs specimens from the cook. In March 1907, he learns Mary is working for a family on Park Avenue. Typhoid, too, is already in residence. A chambermaid has just been taken to the hospital, and the family's only child is in critical condition. Mary helps nurse the girl. Here you go, my darling. Oh, I know. Just hold on, Adler. Just hold on. It was at this house that I had my first interview with Mary. I supposed she would be glad to know the truth. I thought I could count on her cooperation. Soper's account of their meeting is almost theatrical. Miss Mary Mallon? I'm Mary Mallon. Miss Mallon, my name is Dr. George Soper. I have been looking for you for quite a while. I was hired to track you down. To track me down? <laughs> yes, Miss Mallon. It appears that you are the unwitting cause of the typhoid fever outbreak at Oyster Bay last Are you mad? It is imperative that I get specimens from you of urine, feces, and blood to confirm my suspicion. I've never been sick a day in my life. I've never had typhoid. Miss Mallon, you contain within your body typhoid fever germs. When you visit the toilet, these germs get on your fingers. You then transmit these germs to the food. Are you suggesting that I don't wash my hands? No, Miss Mallon. Soper claims that the meeting ended badly when Mary reached down, picked up a meat fork, and threatened to, uh, well, stab him with it. Get out of my kitchen! Miss Mellon, please! Get out of my Ms. kitchen Mellon, and please, don't try, come back try again! To be reasonable. Keep going! I don't want to see you back here again! Keep going! I think that he makes her sound a lot more fearsome than she was, simply to explain the fact that, you know, he... Well, she scared the hell out of him. He unleashed a violent temper in her by what he thought was a mild request reasonable request, a scientific request. And she sees it as the exact opposite of that. Soper did not mention the families where I have worked where there was no typhoid. He did not see fits to mention the family I always lived with in the Bronx when I was out of work, and where I shared a room with the children without giving them typhoid. Mary Mallon had no reason to think that she could have communicated typhoid fever to anybody. The concept that if you are sick with a particular disease, you can give it to somebody else is fairly new. Why would you believe all of a sudden a group of scientists telling you that invisible germs that you can't even see, that you've never heard of before, are causing all these diseases that you've seen for decades and decades? Like most people of her time, Mary Mallon does not understand the cause of disease. In the 19th century, you had this idea about disease that somehow it came from filth. And filth was somehow a moral statement about your community. So the filthier your community, the more subject you were to having what were called miasmas arise. 
people thought that illness came from mysterious sewer uh, sewer gases, miasmas, you know, uh, you know, we're not far away from evil spirits. In the home where Mary Mallon works, the daughter dies of typhoid fever. Mary must be taken in for testing. I stationed one policeman in the front of the house, another on the nearest side street, had an ambulance waiting around the corner, and with a third policeman at my elbow, I knocked at the servant's entrance. Miss Mallon, the health department has sent me to take you with us. I'm going nowhere! Oh. 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 Officer! Mary sees her, brandishes a fork again, supposedly. Mary goes on a lamb, tries to get away, with police searching everywhere. Has Mary Mallon come through here? The rest of the servants denied knowing anything about her or where she was. Even in my distress, I liked that loyalty. We went through every nook and cranny. It was utter defeat. Then one of the policemen with me caught sight of a tiny scrap of blue calico caught in a door in a back hallway. Several ash cans were heaped up in front of it. Mary, I am no. under instructions to bring you in to take samples I'm from going you. Nowhere. Now, Mary, you have typhoid germs in no, your body. No we will germs. not hurt you. They pull Mary Mallon out, scratching and screaming and yelling. No! Let me go! I'm not... Takes the five police officers to get her into the ambulance. And Josephine Baker sits on her in the ambulance the whole way to Willard Parker Hospital, where they're going to take her. It was like being in a cage with an angry lion. Mary is taken to Willard Parker Hospital, an infectious disease facility for the poor. There's a photograph of Mary Mallon in bed at Willard Parker Hospital. And she is in a room with a lot of other people. Who knows if they have typhoid fever or something else, or why she's in bed since she's not sick. Being brought to Willard Parker was, in some sense, a statement about Mary's worth that she would have understood very clearly. She would have said, oh, my God, you know, how dare they? I mean, this, is, this was a real kind of insult to her. I have committed no crime, and I am treated like an outcast, a criminal. It is unjust, outrageous, uncivilized. And it is incredible that in a Christian community, a defenseless woman can be treated in this manner. At New York City's pioneering bacteriology laboratory, scientists test Mary's specimens using the most advanced tools and techniques. Samples are placed in an incubator to see if bacteria grow. The results are unambiguous. The hospital's laboratory speedily proved that Mary was as dangerous as Dr. Soper had suspected. Her stools were a living culture of typhoid bacilli. George Soper knew all along from his work that she could carry typhoid fever. This was proof that she did carry typhoid fever. Soper has made a major breakthrough in the battle against disease, proving that Mary harbors the bacteria, even though she insists she has never had typhoid fever. Mary Mellon did have typhoid fever, but she had a very, very mild case of the disease. And she never knew she had typhoid fever or was that sick at all. In fact, she probably just thought she had a cold or the flu. In most cases of typhoid fever, the body is host to a microbial battle where there is a clear winner. If the bacteria win, the patient dies. If the immune system wins, the typhoid bacteria die. But in the case of a healthy carrier, there is no clear winner. The immune system protects the body from infection, but the bacteria continue to live. Mary, with no symptoms at all, 
is as contagious as someone sick with a disease. The press gets a hold of the story immediately in 1907, but they don't get very much of it. The health department is clearly trying to keep a lid on the fact that they are holding against her will a healthy 37-year-old woman. 